this morning, something really, really strange happened. I believe I was halfway asleep. I may have some things mixed up, but please hear me out. But I felt an evil presence in my room. And on top of that, real quickly, how can I explain this? If you see a shadow of a person, you know, you kind of know how that looks, right? If I can explain this well, I saw a shadow, but real quick. Like, maybe like a humanoid shadow, like real fast. In a room where it is only me. <laughs> can you believe that? I believe I saw it like, boom, real fast. And I believe either before or afterward, I forget, I felt an evil presence as well. So if I remember correctly, I think I said a small prayer, like not so much a prayer, but I bind and cast you out right now in the name of Jesus. Something like that. And I may be off in what I am saying to you, but I believe I went to sleep or tried going to sleep. And either I was halfway awake or whatever, it felt like I'm serious. Like, why would I have to make this up? Like, what do I have to gain? Popularity? Anyways, it felt like something was trying to pull something out of me. Like, I'm guessing as if there are two of me. And I believe I felt that sensation on other occasions as well. And if I had to guess, I believe whatever that was, a, a demon, witch, or whatever, was trying to pull my spirit out of my body. So when that happened, I think I woke up all the way and I may have said a small prayer and I believe I tried going back to sleep again and I think the same thing happened again. So I think this trying to go to sleep and feeling that sensation happened Maybe in total, I forget, but maybe three times. And usually when attacks happen to me like that, if I say a small prayer and it continues to happen, much of the time, I am going to get down on my knees or begin praying for a longer time. So I get down on my knees and I was aiming for to pray for an hour. I may have prayed for maybe 40 minutes or 50 minutes. I'm not really sure because like... I believe I was praying and <laughs> then I went to sleep. But after praying like that, 
I don't believe my sleep was interrupted, but as I think now, I think I was having some weird dreams. Now, you may ask me, Kevin, did you do something wrong? I'm not sure. Maybe. But in attack like that, at that strength, I would say is rare. Maybe something like that happens to me. Maybe less than 20 times a year. I assume. So I would say that is not so usual. And I was having, and I believe I had some bad dreams as well. So I think I can say perhaps I am under attack. Maybe it is because I pray for some people. Maybe I made a mistake or a mistake in judgment. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think many of us go through spiritual attack, right? And you may get attacked, you may get attacked like me to where your sleep is interrupted. And you may wonder what you can do about it. Pray. Pray longer than 20 seconds. Hey, you may have to pray longer than five minutes. I believe many of us have phones. Set out your timer and go as long as you can. A half hour, hour, two hours, what it takes, right? You may have to fast. Sometimes I would fast with no food, no drink for three days. Sometimes two days. Sometimes maybe eight to 12 hours, sometimes 16 hours or something like that. You don't have to fast 40 days and 40 nights every time you fast. I guess if you can do that, that is good, right? But do something, right? Don't continue to be attacked and not do anything, right? Like if I came to, if I came in front of your face and started to do this to you, you know, like this right here, would you just <laughs> stay there? <laughs> Won't you move your head like, hey, stop, hey, stop, you know? Won't you do something to prevent me from thumping your head, right? <laughs> okay, if you are being attacked, why not do something? I believe if I didn't pray, get down on my knees and started to pray for that long, I believe that demon or whatever that was would continue to mess with me until I did what I did. I was sleepy and I think that was one of the reasons I gave small prayers or small commands, I guess I can say. I feel that we have to engage in spiritual warfare, but what is most important, I think, yes, we may not do everything correctly, but let's strive for perfection in Jesus Christ, as in following his rules and 
changing our ways to his. Because if you are choosing to live sinfully, and if you are trying to cast out demons while you are content in living contrary to the rules of Jesus Christ, how can that work? If you are siding, whether by your mouth or by your actions, with demons and Satan, how can Satan cast out Satan? If you are on the same side of demons, whether you are saying it or you are choosing to live wrongly, how can you come against demons while you are living a lifestyle in agreement, I guess I can say, with demons? Does that make any sense? How can I be stealing stuff and while I am stealing, I am, I rebuke you demons in the name of Jesus while I am stealing. Like I don't want to stop stealing, but I feel an evil presence so I am trying to rebuke a demon while I am enjoying stealing. How can I, I hope this makes sense, does it? How can I be getting drunk, popping pills, watching bad stuff on TV and I am cool with that, right? I am not trying to change, but I am trying to tell demons to leave after I see them appear. How can that be? Please think about this. Now, if I am trying to change and I rebuke demons, okay, that makes sense. I may be messing up, but if I am not content in a sinful lifestyle, okay, I believe I can rebuke demons. But if I am cool with that lifestyle and if I don't want to change, how can I command demons when I am in rebellion against Jesus Christ. I believe this is one of the reasons why I live for Jesus Christ. Getting attacked like <laughs> What happened this morning was not the worst I have ever been through. I remember, I forget when it was, maybe last year, maybe early this year. I could say I was dreaming, but I think many dreams are supernatural experiences like real stuff. I think much of them are real. I had a dream and I believe I was living for Jesus Christ as well. It's like something was trying to, to make this easy to understand, like I was hanging on to something with either one hand or whatever and something was trying to suck me up, like upwards, like with great force, I believe. And while I was being or trying to be sucked up and I was holding on either with one hand or two hands, like I think very tightly. And 
And the atmosphere was really, really hot, I believe. And I did not know, I don't believe I knew what was going on, but I guess I kind of knew that don't let go. Please listen to what I am saying. I woke up, right? I believe almost the same heat level I felt in that dream, which I don't believe that was a dream. I felt almost the same stuff when I woke up. How is that possible? Like, I believe that heat was really high. Like, not an earthly heat, if that makes any sense. I believe... I don't know if I was in hell, I have no idea, but I believe I woke up with that, that hot feeling. Spiritual war, isn't it? There were times, <laughs> I think more than one time actually, but I believe there was a time I was laying down and if I am saying this correctly, I believe it felt like there was two of me. Imagine that. And one of me was laying down, I believe, but it felt like I was coming off, like I was coming off where I was laying at. So let's say I am laying on my couch. It felt like I was floating off my couch against my will, man. And I believe I was either going, I think there was a time where I was going towards my door. Like I'm trying to hold on or like not go towards my door, but I am going toward my door. If I remember this correctly. And I went down like, <laughs> like I went, I believe, past my floor, like through my floor. So I assume it was not my earthly body, but perhaps my spirit. And I think something like that happened to me more than one time. With these things that happened to me, I believe it shows me and tells me, Kevin, you can't play around. You can't go back to your old lifestyle. You can't, like, <laughs> don't give up on Jesus Christ. I'm telling you now. I believe so many bad things could have happened to us, but I believe one of the reasons they may haven't, I believe because of the grace of God. Yes, we may have went through some bad things, but probably worse would have happened. Now, what power do I have over a demon without Jesus? I went below my floor. Like I was floating, I guess I can say, my spirit or whatever it was, toward my door and I'm trying to stop it. You may think I am insane or Kevin is crazy or whatever else. Look now, I believe there is a life many of us are so unaware of. Now, I may have not went through so many supernatural experiences as other people, some other people, I guess, but I can tell you now, this stuff is real. Like, don't play around with Jesus Christ. Give your life to him while you still have a chance. I didn't know that stuff was going to happen to me. What if, what if I was playing around in sin 
and God allowed whatever that was or whatever happened to take me to hell. I believe I would have been unprepared if I was living in sin. But I believe stuff like this, what I go through, either I am doing the wrong thing or God is trying to strengthen me, strengthen me or give me experience. I don't know, but probably allowing it for my own good. Maybe I should say that. So, learn to fight back. Yes, when you live for Jesus Christ, I think you are going to have problems. So, if anyone told you your problems stop when you live for Jesus Christ, excuse me, I think that is not true because I go through quite a bit of problems I really do but but what I can say I have peace yes sometimes I may get angry or hurt or a little bit depressed or whatever maybe more depressed but I have peace I am content I may not be happy all the time but I have joy. I thank God. Learn to be appreciative in life. Appreciate the small stuff. Learn to pray without ceasing. I am not saying you have to pray 10 hours a day, 20 hours a day. But learn to, I guess I can say, petition God over and over and over again i was praying let me say this the heater of my car is it was messing up man i may have prayed about my heater <laughs> so many times maybe 10 plus times or more asking God <laughs> to fix my heater. And last night, I think it was, my heater works. Maybe not in the perfect way, but it turns on. And I truly thank God, my heater in my car. And I truly thank God for that. So, oh, makes a huge difference. Like, have you ever been very cold in a car and you have to drive for maybe a half hour or an hour? No, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I, oh, I thank God so much for working through someone and answering my prayer. If I am saying that right. I believe God answered my prayer through another, which I believe he has done so many times. Learn to never stop praying about something or as much as you can remember or as much as you can stand, continue to pray for what you want. Don't give up. Kevin, you know, I should only pray about something one time and God should swoop down and do whatever I am asking him. <sighs> Look now, if that doesn't happen, don't give up and continue to pray for what you want God to do for you, right? Don't ask God to kill someone for you. Don't ask God to place someone in jail for you. Don't ask God to harm someone for you. I believe we supposed to 
bless our enemies in prayer as well, right? So if we reap whatever we sow and you are praying harm upon your enemies, what do you believe is going to happen to you? If you are praying, God curse that person, God, I return curses and spells and witchcraft back on that person and let their finances be dried up. Aren't you cursing people? Isn't that like some witchcraft stuff right there? If we are going to reap what we sow, aren't you going to have a taste of that back upon you? So I think that is one of the reasons why we have to bless our enemies, right? Unless I am mistaken, which I don't believe I am. Let me stop here. God bless you all.